Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the new Path tool. I simply left click on the Path tool to access my basic options. There you can see we have the Asset, Smoothness, Opacity and Alignment, as well as several advanced features which we'll go through later on in the tutorial. For now, to select an asset, I simply click on the asset and that brings up all of the options currently available in Dungeon Fog, with many more on the way. Let's select, for example, the wooden walkway. Now that I have the wooden walkway selected, I can go back to my canvas and create my path. Now there are two ways to create a path. There is a point and click, so I left click once, let go, left click again, let go, left click again, let go, and I can create my path that way. To finish creating your path, by the way, you simply move your cursor away from the last point you created and right click anywhere that will close off the path. The alternative way of making a path is to create a new path by clicking on the path tool itself. Then I can simply left click and hold and draw the path as I so desire. Now you'll notice straight away that it creates a lot of vertex points. Now we will be able to edit these vertex points of course and move them around manipulate them as we so choose. It does create quite a smooth flowing track however. If I go back to the original track that I created with the very small amount of curves in it I can select edit curve and we'll see that we only have four vertex points. I can select each vertex point as I desire of course, move that around, change it to wherever I want it to be, or alternatively I could right click on it and delete it to create a very straight path, or I could click on the path and add a point just as we've done in walls and shapes and things, and now I have that ability to move these around, add these points in. If I want the path to be smooth, however, all I do is come over to the smoothness slider, which is currently set at 0%, and as I increase it you'll notice that the curve starts to form, and at 100% it creates a smooth curved track using only 4 points as opposed to the hand-drawn method, which creates points as it goes along. I find less points is a lot easier to work with than lots of multiple points. We have the snap to grid option if we're creating a new path where it will snap to the grid. If we need to be very precise, we can do that as well. Again, right click elsewhere to end the path. This is at 0% smoothness. There is much more to the path tool, however, and those we will find in the advanced settings. In the advanced settings, we have the option to change the scale of the texture. I'm going to zoom in here by holding control and scrolling in on my mouse. If I change the text to scale, we'll see that the scale of the texture changes exactly what it says it does. We can increase or decrease the size. Notice that what it does not do is increase the scale of the path itself. That remains fixed, so that's a really useful tool. Now we also have the flip texture option, which allows the texture to quite literally flip. It may not be immediately noticeable, but it's definitely making a difference. Just being able to flip the texture, however, might not be enough. You might want to reshuffle the order in which the path has been drawn. Now, the path is comprised of a series of images, and those images are repeated over time, but we can change the order in which they have been presented. We simply tap the reshuffle button. Notice how it's changing the textures that have been applied to our path, so we can really play around and tweak each and every section until we get the section that we find visually appealing. We might not like how our path ends. If you look at this path here, the ending is not well finished. So I'm going to finish with this other path, go back to the original path by simply left clicking on it, and I can then go to Endings. If I click on the ending, I'm presented with the start and the end option. We're at the end of our path, so I'm going to select the end option first, and I have several options. I have none, in which case it does not apply a specific ending. I have the shrink option, which allows me to shrink the path down, and I have a slider here to control how much it shrinks. Very useful if you're designing a river or some kind of organic growth. I have the fade option which again, I can control the distance of the fade. This is useful if you're designing staircases heading downwards or upwards, or if you want something to emerge from an area. Really useful. And then finally, we have an actual end. This is a designed end that the artist came up with, which creates a natural termination for us. We can do the same to the start of the track, although in this case, it looks pretty good already.
Various paths have got different end caps. So if I change this to say bridge, for example, it's quite a dramatic change. I'm just going to create a very simple bridge here for you to see. Again, right click somewhere to close off the tool. And if I now select the ending, you'll notice that I still have my none, shrink or fade options. But now when I select end cap, you'll see that it creates these wonderful posts. This is a rope suspension bridge of some kind. And if I select the start, there's one that's been made for the beginning. So we can see now this is exactly how our bridge will look. And again, we can go in and change these points. So if we want it to be a little bit further away, a little bit longer of a bridge, have a bit more of a curve there, and let's make it a bit of a crazy suspension bridge and give it a bit of a curve there, we can see that our path is now following all of the rules that we could possibly want it to follow. And uh, this handle here that I'm selecting allows us to decrease or increase how long the ending or the beginning actually is imposed upon our original path. Lots of functionality available to us, but that's not all. We also have the behavior drop-down option. So if I select behavior, you'll see that we can turn the path into a map decoration. So in other words, it will function as an additional layer on our map for export purposes. We could have it above the walls so that it would sit above walls if we were creating a prop that needed to sit above the walls of a room. We can conceal the object from our players if we're going to present this within the Dungeon Fog map viewer, or we could indicate that the entire path is trapped. And that, of course, would sit in our GM notes. And that is how you use the new paths tool from Dungeon Fog.